<laughs> it's another tough review. <laughs> another one. I love my job. And to be honest, I'm surprised that I did not uh, uh, review that one before because it's grown, the tough series, to be uh, a, a more and more a go-to product for gamers and to appreciate where tech takes us today. And, and today we are reviewing nothing less, but it's Z790 variant, the tough gaming Z790 plus Wi-Fi from Asus. The one and only piece of hardware designed to outlast, well, anything in your life really, including your girlfriend, which never really uh, supported your gaming life as much as I did. Uh, and talking of which, now that you are freshly single and full of this brand new financial uh, uh, freedom, the next mistake you should be doing is to support my channel to keep it sponsor free. Something that should be able to keep you uh, physically uh, satisfied. The tough is more and more playing an important role in the Asus ecosystem. Five years ago, it was kind of struggling to find its place, it was not really a very well-defined kind of product, but season after season, the Tough is asserting a more distinct personality, which evolves mainly around sturdiness and an affordable getaway to what the latest tech standards have to offer. Problem is, this year's competition really aligns its pricing very closely, almost to the cent, uh, uh, to where the tough is priced at, meaning that this time around it won't be enough uh, to be good. It really needs to be the best. God, I'm so good. Its natural competition is the Z790 Tomahawk from MSI, which I have reviewed and you should be checking if you haven't done so yet, and the Z790 uh, Arrows Elite from Gigabyte. Now, starting with the start, the TUF Z790 comes with a 6PCB layered ATX logic board, which is adequate to ensure a strong PCI signal installation and avoid component interferences, and in addition, ensures a better VRM heat dissipation. So as far as fundamental goes, check. Design-wise, no super shiny plasticky kind of look as seen on the B650 version I reviewed last month, was not a fan of that. The overall aesthetic stays within a very monolithic dark space ambience, which I do like, and marks itself apart from the rest of the Asus Z790 lineup. RGB-wise, we got two embedded RGB strips providing some shine on the board front edge, which I think we could have easily done without. I mean, other than the IO roofing um, on some premium motherboards, I think that those RGB lighting gimmicks are becoming more and more obsolete and useless. And on more mid-budget boards, manufacturers should leave the RGB arrangements up to the buyer. They can use any or all of the four Aura compliant RGB connectors if they want to, three of which are addressable. Now, CPU socket wise, the board is powered by the now well-known LG1700 CPU socket, which did allow the introduction of both the PCIe 5 standard as well as DDR5 RAM. And by the way, it is important to notice that it will also support the 14th generation of Intel processors, making it the first Intel socket I have ever reviewed to support more than two generations of processor. Finally, finally, Intel made it to three processors. AMD has been doing so for years, they, they, they support 3 to 5 CPU per CPU socket, uh, but as long as I've been reviewing motherboard, which is quite a bit of time, I've never seen Intel doing so. Good news is, buying this board, as well as all you know, LG1700 uh, powered motherboards, means a better future proofing investment as, uh, than usual in the Intel ecosphere. VRM-wise, well, the Z790 TUF comes with what it brings, meaning 1760 amps power stages organized in an eight team phases plus one configuration. That is about 900 amps uh, worth of CPU-centric power, which is sensibly more than what you'll find on its prime sibling, which is good and is enough to power and overclock any current uh, available Intel Core processors. But 
that is also 220 amps less than its elite counterpart. Or, and hold on on your South Korean belts, 550 amps less than found on the Tomahawk. Now, some would accuse a competition to play uh, Spec Wars. Probably do. Doesn't take away the fact that the Tough is coming last out of the three and proposes a less powerful and less future-proofed product than its competition. Also, since this VRM will more than likely uh, be running uh, 14th generation of, of Intel Core processors with many more cores, it might be problematic. But at least we do have the tough treatment, which does make this VRM enhance uh, the overall board quite a bit more durable and than what is available on its competition. Now, cooling-wise, the board is adequately well equipped with two massive, and I mean massive, independent VRM blocks. They both show a three-level cooling stages, and the main VRM shows off a wide central wall to store excess heat and a large extended roof to dissipate it all away. Additionally, and as usual, they feature a double contact design, meaning that they both provide a thermal padded direct contact to power stages and chokes alike. Now, with a moderately overclocked i7 CPU and with an hour-long synthetic stress test, heat results are correct and show an acceptable temperature control, keeping the Celsius bar below 55 degrees Celsius at all time. Overall, I would grade this VRM to uh, um, a solid B-, which is not bad, really. And uh, uh, yeah, see it coupled with at least an i5 processor nothing less. Memory-wise, our TOF with the latest BIOS can support up to 192GB worth of DDR5 RAM, clockable up to a very fast 7.2GHz. Obviously, that is a sizable memory jump, thanks to the BIOS update, which allows now 48GB uh, stick uh, uh, support instead of 32 before. In application, having 192GB of DDR5 RAM will not revolutionize your gaming experience because, well, I don't know many games who would bottleneck 100, uh, 128GB worth of RAM, uh, but where you might uh, perceive some serious uh, performance gain is in the production context, uh, um, 3D rendering, video creation, and all those, you know, very heavy memory intensive softwares. As the clock goes, 7.2 gigahertz is basically as far as you can hope uh, a DDR5 RAM to go currently, but do not expect those kinds of speeds on, on a fully populated dual channel. You might more likely get those speeds with a single or dual stick, configuration, anything more, uh, I'd be more comfortable saying or advertising a 6 GHz clock. Now, staying in the memory, our board is equipped with four PCIe 4 M.2 solid state drives, meaning that they can all swap data up to a very fast 64 gigabit per second individually. And as in many mid-budget, not all sticks are equipped with a heat relief. Only our CPU linked stick will receive a dedicated thermal padded heat shield, which worth noting is rather thick and does a great job at keeping it away from thermal throttling. Therefore, that is where I'd place my boot drive. The three and four sticks share the same long and thermal padded plate, which is equally thick and does an equally good job at avoiding thermal bleeding between them two sticks. Therefore, if you do want to attribute a red configuration to, to M.2 solid state drive, this is those two I would use. Obviously, the last naked stick should be only used in a very well aired build, but other than that, I would not depend on it too much. Now, most importantly, if you use this M.2 solid state drive in addition of this one, you are forsaking half of the PCIe lanes of your fastest PCIe export, and even though it will not affect the current generation of GPUs, which are anyways all capped at the PCIe 4 standard, it does affect the board future proofing to some extent, and that does bother me quite a bit, because it did not need to be so. Now, last but not least, I do want to note the presence of our M.2 screwless locks, which Asus introduced a few years back, with another tough, by the way, and are and remain the best in the industry, in my opinion. In general, I do find this storage configuration a little bit misleading, advertising for four connectors, but in application, if you do, you will be sacrificing quite a bit of graphical potential performances in the future, 
And yeah, that, that's really not cool. On the other hand, we have no PCI 5.0 enabled M.2 solid state drives, which is kind of a symptom of a Z790 powered motherboards, but still kind of bothers me because if you go on the AMD side of things, they all feature PCI 5.0 enabled M.2 solid state drive, all of them. I mean, in the X670 world, uh, but here, yeah, it's, it really shows how Intel was poorly prepared for the PCI 5.0 standard. Now, export wise, well, we got five. Five bandwidth starved exports. First comes our CPU linked and only PCI 5.0 enabled export on the board. It shows off 16 PCI lanes able to swap data up to 64 gigabyte per second in both directions. Therefore, and obviously this is where you want your GPU placed for optimal performances, hence the metallic reinforcement. Apart from the second 16 slot, which does run at somewhat decent 8 gigabyte per second speed, I struggle to understand why we need all these single and dual exports. The single slots are deadly slow and the dual slot monopolizes way too much bandwidth. Bandwidth which would have been great if refocus on the M.2 solid state drive sticks to avoid a GPU taxing bandwidth bifurcation. Maybe there's something I didn't understand or missed, but as far as I go, I'd rather have two 16 slots with their current specs and a bit more bandwidth for my storage. Now on the plus side, I do like having a proper second generation PCIe slot opener or a Q slot release as they call it. It's easy, it's sturdy and will do you a world of favors when removing monstrously large video cards. Now chipset wise, our board is powered by Intel latest Z790 chipset, which still runs at a very cool six watts, allowing to keep it cold even with a somewhat reduced heat shield. Other than that, we are dealing with a very similar bandwidth menu than seen on its predecessor, the Z690. Most of the novelties this year coming from the 13th generation of Intel processors providing 20 PCIe 5.0 lanes, which were very poorly used on this board. Now, back IO wise, let me start with a reassuring presence of an integrated back IO, a must at this price range. And starting from the left, we have a couple of plugs for our integrated graphics, four USB 5 gigabit plugs, four USB 3.2 plugs, all able to transfer 10 gigabit per second worth of data, except this dual channel one, which can go up to 20. A surge protected 2.5 gigabit LAN, our dual band Wi-Fi 6 adapter, able to transfer in the much cleaner and faster six gigahertz radio spectrum, and a rather aged, but very good 7.1 channel S1220 Realtek audio codec, which used to be the shit a couple years ago, but now has been replaced by the ALC4082. Still, it was not the best for nothing. Uh, we got a great SNR, both in playback and recording, and a static free environment, thanks to uh, a PCB dedicated audio tracing. Not much cleansing, capacitors, only 300 microfarads worth. So even though I, I do trust the board uh, to, to, to be uh, static free in all configuration, I would still make sure that my computer is plugged in a, in, in a grounded plug to avoid some weird sounds when recording. In all and for all, a rather uh, modest but somewhat premium back IO, I gotta say. We got a 20 gig plug, uh, it's always a plus and um, yeah, that's it. Uh, my, my real beef here, my problem with it, is a complete absence of a flashback BIOS button, which would have allowed us a CPU-less BIOS upgrade. All of its competition have it, it doesn't here. So, yeah, not happy. Now, front panel connector-wise, nothing groundbreaking, but some premium. Nevertheless, we have our usual two legacy USB second generation for quality monitoring and power supply, a third generation USB plug, a 10 gigabit Type-C front panel plug, and yes, a Thunderbolt 4.0 card connector for an easy and premium upgrade. Very, very happy to see this indeed. Calling wise, we got our seven PWM fan connectors, one of which can be used for an all-in-one water cooling uh, solution in par with a single GPU status of this motherboard. It's it's a, it's very solid for air cooling. Definitely not the board you want to try for a custom water cooling system or apparatus. But nothing surprising here. Now troubleshooting wise, well, it hurts. It really does. Unlike any of its competition, the Tough Z790 has no clear CMOS, no flashback, nothing which could quickly and securely get you out of trouble or help you with. Uh, the only thing we got is our loyal easy debugger, which will hint a vague direction where the problem might come from, but 
that is about it. Clearly insufficient in my expert opinion. Now, in conclusion, the Tough Gaming Z790 Plus Wi-Fi will cost you anywhere between 230 and 250 USD before taxes, which is exactly what its competition is pricing itself at, and my verdict is not kind. Despite being an extremely sturdy and reliable product, I mean, it is a tough motherboard after all, uh, having a very good quality PCB, providing a decent VRM, good cooling components, and some rather premium tough features, it is a board with too many outs and not enough in. Now, too many outs as in too many PCIe and M.2 solid state drive connectors and not enough bandwidth to fit them all in the same time. In short, and to make it more catchy, the motherboard is bandwidth starved. And it didn't have to be that way. I, I, you know, some common sense decision and having less exports would have really helped mitigating the issues, the bandwidth issue. Sometimes less is more. And I will not talk too much about the VRM. Uh, it is good, it's reliable, but simply suffers from a competition doing better. The core issue here is that this motherboard advertised a little bit more than it can chew. And my job is to make sure you know what you're getting into. So all things considered, uh, this budget bracket, I'd probably instead go for a Z790 Aris Elite AX, which seems to be the most finished product um, of them three, striking a near perfect balance between a great VRM, good bandwidth sourcing, and, and troubleshooting uh, options. So yes, I'm so sorry, Asus. It's, you don't, it's not your day every day. And I hope that uh, the next version of your TUF will take in consideration what I've just said today. Thank you.